Hey, welcome to Church Online. So happy to have you today. If this is your first time, we're super thrilled that you're here with us. And if you're part of our People Church fam, our digital community, watching from LA, New York, or anywhere around the world, so happy to have you back. And if you're wondering how to become part of our People Church fam, there's gonna be a moment coming up later on in service where you can learn about all the different things you can be part of, events, services, how to get involved, even things happening in your city. But for now, we're gonna go ahead, take a second, we're gonna lean into some worship, we're gonna hear an amazing message from Pastor Chris in our heart series. So why don't we stand up, turn the volume up a little bit, lift our hands and let's worship. Come on, are we ready? Let's lift up some noise. People Church, we are so happy to have you with us. Are you all ready to worship? Come on. If you're comfortable, go ahead and lift up your hands. We're going to sing together. It is our first time officially back. Come on. Yes. Here we go. A peace like a river. Wash over me, immerse me in water, immerse me in water as deep as the sea, hide me in love, your healing embrace, in peace like a river, come on, wash over As I worship your majesty Follow me, hear you Worship your holy name Jesus, my everything All that I am is yours All that we are is yours Yes Fling wide the gates, flood every heart with mercy. 
too. Come on, do you believe that? Let's sing it again. Can you revive Lord, send it now. Move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land like you've done it before. What you do? Come on, you can sing it loud.
how, how good does it feel to be here today? Man, what an incredible feeling. You know, I, I felt the weight of this moment, you know, when Courtney asked me to do the, the MC moment, I was like, oh gosh. First time in person, it's been a while. Eva even asked me here, hey, on the, on the way here, she's like, are you nervous? I'm like, no, I don't think so. But now that I'm here, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> but I, I, wanna, I just want to leave you with a, a few things here, right? So God left me with this word, unity. As we, as we unite as a church for the first time, I think that there's going to be power in our unity. There's something that the devil is, is worried about. And that's why he stopped it a couple weeks ago, but he can't stop it forever. So I just, I want to read a quick, I want to read a quick verse here. And it's John 17, 20 through 24. It says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me though, that their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may not, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So, the thing that's, you know, that's Jesus talking there. And like, the thing about that moment is you can't deny the passion in that moment in what he's saying. And the, the coolest part about that verse to me is that it's not just like something he said, but he actually, he wants us to be united so that we can be evidence to the world. So that we can be evidence to the world that he is one. There's three, but there's one and he is not divided. So as we, you know, we keep this going and we keep meeting in person and, and we, we bring this thing of unity together, I believe that there's going to be something on the other side of this that we haven't seen. I believe that everything that God has for our church is on the other side of unity. I believe that everything that God has called upon, the promises, all of that stuff, it sits on the other side of it. So you being here today is not a coincidence very intentional and purposeful. So we're going to take a second to pray here, but remember that this is the evidence that we are not just a body that gets together and stays separate, where we are united as one. So we're going to pray for unity. We're going to pray for more capacity to open up. We're going to pray for a church building. We're going to pray for everything that allows us to be united. We'll so why don't you pray with me? Lord Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to get together today and be united as a church and for the things that are to come, Lord. I know that it doesn't look perfect. It doesn't look like it once did, but it's more than it was, right? It's not perfect unity, but it's more unity, Lord. So we're gonna pray that it keeps going. We're gonna pray for our church building. We're gonna pray for a united front that the world, that a, that a disunited world, a world that is just going in every direction can look to us and see, wow, there is something supernatural going on there. So as we, as we go into the next moment, Lord, I just, we are just so grateful and we love you and we thank you for this very special moment as a church. In your name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Man, come on, let's give it up a little bit. So good, so good, so good, man. It's, it's just so, it feels so good to be speaking to some people. You know, like you do this MC moment and it's like, it's dry sometimes, but this is, man, it makes a difference. It makes a difference, it really does. Um, but man, just on that, on that same note of unity, like we're united in many different ways, not just here and gathering in person, but what we do as a united church, right? Like one of the main things we do here is that we give together, right? And that giving allows for this
this to happen. Yeah. It allows for us to partner with our city, for the people that need it. It allows for things to actually go much further, right? We can only be as generous as our people in our churches. So I just want to thank the people that, that tithe, that go above and beyond, that give offering, all that stuff. It, it matters. We notice it, and we're so grateful for it. Without you guys, like, you know, with God, everything's possible. But, you know, he stewards it with, with you guys. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, and in, in the spirit of unity, like, I just, I don't know, I feel like unity is the word for today for me, right? So we've got, we've got the unity of the church, we've got the unity of giving, but we have the unity of a community, right? And how we do that is Renee. And I'm sure most of you know, and maybe you don't know, maybe you're online and you're watching, you don't know who Renee is, but let me tell you a little bit about her, right? Here at People Church, we say life we do life at the speed of relationships, right? And it's a community that keeps us together. It's something that it, it holds us, right? And Renee allows us to do that. Whether you're looking just to, you know, get to know some new people or, you know, check it out at a distance, find out what our values are, whatever the case is, Renee is there for you. She's our digital assistant. Whatever you need, church at your fingertips, I think is an incredible thing. And it's something that we have, <laughs> you know? It's, it's something that we built in-house for you. So I am incredibly grateful for that. So I'm going to take a second, and we're going to turn to Renee, and we're going to learn a little bit more about her. Hi, my name is Renee, and I'm here to help you connect into the life of our church. Whether you want to meet people, know our values, find connection and community, or figure out your next steps, you can ask me. Think of me as your personal assistant at your fingertips. Let's get started. Grab your phone and send me a text. I'll ask for your name and email to send you an invite. You accept the invitation and you're in. Everything now is just an ask away. So you're looking for ways to get connected? Looking for our values? Looking to know your next steps? Looking to know what's happening in our church? Looking to meet new people? Or maybe you just want to look around to get a feel for things from a safe distance. Whatever it is, I'm here to make our church accessible to you at your fingertips, whenever the time and wherever you may be. We're about to move into our next part of service, so why don't you send me a text and I'll talk to you there. I can't wait to meet you, with you, for you, Renee. Renee is amazing. It's so yes. cool that we have her here just to help our church get connected. That's her girl. And keep people <laughs> connected into the life of church. We have everything from young families hangs, mm -hmm. pixels hangs. Hey. Hey. I might be a little biased. <laughs> but we have some amazing things happening and you can register for our Sunday service. She makes everything so simple. Yeah, and there is plenty for you to be a part of yep. and get connected to. Speaking of, here's what's happening in the life of church. Hey. In case you missed the memo, we are back. Yes. Hey, I'm so excited. Finally. Being back in person is just such an incredible mm -hmm. feeling. After a year of being home, so it's so great to just be in person. Home. And so yeah. you have an opportunity to sign up for our Sunday service. We want you there. We're saving a seat for mm -hmm. you. And what we're going to have is exactly our church service. Live worship, yes. a message from one of our powerful pastors, mm -hmm. and my favorite place, the, the foyer. <laughs> So There's excited. so much connections that we yes. can make there. There are limited spots because we are limited for our space, but we want you there. So be sure to register early, get there, and get around people that you're gonna do life with. Who so are you inviting? I'm, I'm inviting my grow group, hey, my topical yes. group. Yes. So many people that get there. Yes. Sign up and secure your spot through Renee by sending her a direct message slash command right. register. Here at People Church, we are all about relationship and we want to get you connected. Our heart is to make a crowd into a community. And so no matter where you're at on your journey, we have interest groups, yes. grow groups, topical groups. Race there's, in the gospel. Race in the gospel, Join. I mean. We might teach We're that. a little but biased. <laughs> this is okay. There's something for you. So we want you to get planted into community within our church. Yeah. Grow groups gather every other Thursday. And it's really a Bible study around community to discuss different principles, do life together, celebrate the things that are happening in your world and that God is doing in your life. 
Yes, and I cannot stress it enough. Yep. Grow groups have changed my life. I love my grow group leader. I love the people I've met in grow group and we want you there. And we also have topical groups that meet Wednesday evenings and they are designed to just help you navigate different seasons yep. of life. We've got race in the gospel, hey. strength-based <laughs> marriage. Um, we've got so many. Yep. So join a topical group and to get connected to a group, send Renee a direct message of slash command groups and she will assist you with the rest. All right, we also have baptisms coming up. Yes. I'm so excited love for baptisms. baptisms. One of my first Sundays was actually a baptism Sunday. Wow. And just to see someone's day where they drew a line in the sand yeah. and shared their powerful. testimony about what God has done in their life and publicly declare that, mm -hmm. it's just such a powerful yep. experience. And we want that for you. So if you have felt that this is the time in your relationship with Jesus where you're ready to draw a line in the sand and publicly declare that you're walking with God, we want to be able to celebrate yes. that with you. I remember my own baptism. I got in the tub wrong. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> but it changed my life. And if you are considering taking a moment to draw a line in the sand, our team would love to walk this moment out yeah. with you. For more information and to register, send Renee a message of slash command register and she'll help you with the rest. Yeah. Hey, there's plenty for you to engage yep. in, in the life of We church. want you there. And we want you part of it all. Yep. I mean, Danny's going to be there. Yes. I'm going to be there. What more do you need? We're a good time. <laughs> Jesus is there. We what just, more do you need? Jesus is there, always. <laughs> so we always, every single week, have a what's on message come through our girl, Renee, so she yes. keeps us up to date. And we also have it on, on Instagram to see upcoming events, service opportunities, and even meet new people come through meet all us. of our groups. Come meet us, we'll be yes. there. So go ahead and meet Renee. If you've already met her, keep your eyes peeled every single Monday for what's on this week and the weeks to come for all the things happening in the life of church. Are y'all ready, ready for this? this? We are in a new series. What's it called? Hearts. Hey. <laughs> it's been so, so good already. Yeah, it's about to get even better. Oh my gosh. How can I don't get know better? if I'm ready, but we're gonna get no. ready for this. Okay. Um, yeah. So grab your notebooks. Call your friends. Call your mom, call your people, call everybody. Get them there. Yep. Send them the link. Yep. But let's lean into this message and we'll see you soon. Let's go. So good. Come on, why don't we give God a shout of praise? Very nice to be back. Very nice to see you all. It is very, very crazy to see you all. I actually don't really know who I'm looking at because you all got masks on, so I don't really know who I'm looking at. This could be a whole new church, except for Leslie. I can recognize Leslie. We're family. Are you good this evening? So good. Some people all over the place. Well, um, man, I, I, it's been a minute since we've been here, so I don't exactly know how to act. I know what to do. I mean, I'd say high five someone, but I, I don't think we're there yet, you know? Come on, Chris, calm down, we just came out. Um, but anyway, I think it's gonna be an awesome service. I believe God's gonna move if you're uh, online. So good to have you there. Can't wait to have you here. Um, and we are in a series named Hearts. Um, this series, I think, is going to rock us. And I think in a 18-month period or there and about where we've been forced to kind of live in our head, where the voices of the world have been loudest through our devices, through the challenge around us, I think God's going to do something in this. And I think that what He's going to do is going to be far greater than what you and I realize. I think that although, uh, you know, we can imagine off the, back, big of, off the back of a big season that there's always, God's gonna do something. But what I really believe is that it's gonna be more unique than what you and I realize. That nothing is, you know, a surprise to our God. He knows exactly what these last 18 months has, have been. And He also knows where you have been. And not in the sense of condemnation, but you gotta understand that our God, David, often references Him as a God that has incredible reach. 
He's got the ability to get to you even when you feel like you've gone too far. You're just too far gone. I don't know where my passion is anymore. I don't know where I stand on this subject, God, and it's getting so murky that I can't see you through it. That's the reality of the last 18 months for so many. I don't know where I stand on this subject any longer, so I don't know where I stand with you. The reality is that you don't find God in the faculty of your intelligence, but in the Spirit in your heart. It's His ability to get to you, to you there that opens up your ability to comprehend everything else. And this heart series is gonna adjust, it's gonna recalibrate, it's gonna fire up, it's gonna break down, it's gonna inspire, it's gonna move because that's what He does when He calls His church. And so anyway, it's gonna be good. It's good to have you online, no matter where you are from, whether you are in Europe, we're just going continents at this point. If you're in Europe, Africa, Asia, North America, South America, Central America, Australia, I mean, a nation that is a continent. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Have you ever heard of such a thing? Surely good things come from that place. Um, or you guys are like, we don't care, we're American. So like, whatever. Um, but anyway, glad you're here. We're gonna pray, we're gonna get into it and it's gonna be good, I hope, in Jesus' Name, Amen. All right, Father God, we just lift up uh, this moment and we pray that You move. We pray that God, You would have Your way that You would speak to us, challenge us, Father God, revive us. And that, Father God, we would be in such a place that uh, we would be usable by You. Not by the way that we wanna be used, Lord God, not the ways that we've imagined, but Father God, the ways that You've intended. In Jesus' Name. And everybody said? Amen, amen. You can say hi to someone. Take your seats. You guys go now, right? You guys can go. Thank you, Ben. Ben can go. Ben can go. Is anyone here and this is your first time in an in-person service at People Church? Oh my, come on now. Let's go. Okay. Come on, we're family. We're family. This is my brother-in-law. I can hug him. I can transfer germs to him. It is okay. My whole family uh, we, we, everyone but River got COVID because she's the chosen one. So it's just absolutely the case. And we are all absolutely COVID free now. Um, our house, our house, like a few of you, well, no one's house got it really, but a few of you got it. Um, but our house was like a Petri dish, man. Like literally, like just everyone had it. I went and bought Lysol and I was like, you got to calm down because... I sprayed the house down, like sprayed it. At the beginning of COVID, when Mike, when we were filming at the house, Mikey would show up and I was so paranoid that I'd spray him down. The poor guy, like he can barely get in. I've like covered him, just covered him, just covered him, anointed him in the ice hole, just in case, just in case. Well, it is so good to have you all here. Um, I can't wait till we can actually in, uh, increase our capacities to what we used to be at. And I know that it'll be there but uh, I believe God's gonna do something good. It's gonna be great. I'm just taking it all in because you're here. Um, all right, awesome. Well, okay, let us, let us begin with the Word. Can, can I count my, can, come on now, we're back now, okay? We're back now. Like, this isn't your lounge room where I can't hear you. Like, I know if you're in it now. This is the place you gotta fake it, kidding. No, terrible, terrible, terrible theology. Don't fake it at church, that's not what it's about. Let's go to the Word, we're gonna read it. Um, and we're gonna start off with Psalm 143. And uh, I think it's an inspiring piece of Scripture. I think it is prophetic in its nature of timing that we are gonna read it. I think that it should be you and I's heart cry. I think if you've ever felt like you are just kind of detached from your best day, if you have ever felt like, man, I just don't know where to go, where, left, right, slow down, speed up, take this opportunity, take that opportunity. God, I don't know. God, in a, in, a, in a time where everybody keeps talking about deconstruct this, deconstruct that, church this, church that, God, what is my place? I call upon you, you are my God, you're the one that I believe in, but God, what do I do right now? Because there's a whole lot of stuff you just don't find in the Bible, right? Like, it's not gonna tell you take job A versus job B. Like, it's not there, but it's there. It's there by the leading of the Spirit. 
It's there by what God sows into us so that we can actually understand the things that we gotta understand. And this is my prayer. We wouldn't be a regular church. And what I mean by regular is just run of the mill, show up and go home. Now I pray that our church would be one of many in this season that would live with their hands up and heart open. With the simplicity of God, where will you take me? Have you ever thought to ask that? Have you ever asked it for real? Let me tell you, it causes you to live in Chicago. But you think you're going to Prague? Because that's how we got here. We were like six weeks stop, going to the Czech Republic to plant a church. Because we were so <laughs> ignorant to the fact of the challenges of church. We didn't even know the language, but we're like, yes, Lord, if you've called me, I shall go. Because you feel holy. You feel good. Your Christian friends, what are you doing? I'm going where the Lord leads me. You've never spoken like that before, Chris. You shut your mouth. You get behind me. It sounds good, but the truth is when you ask that for real and you're willing to follow through, there's a few things that you've got to understand you've just forfeited. You ever thought that? Like when you get married, I don't know if they actually tell you this a lot, but there's a lot of forfeiting. And then when you have children, forfeit. You forfeit sleep, like to the point where you don't even know what's happening. When Ords and I had Cruz and Cruz didn't sleep for the first four weeks, I remember one point, and I don't know how long we were staring at each other, I just remember when we came to, and we're in the lounge room and we're just like rocking. I didn't even have him in my hands, but I'm rocking. You just rock all the time. You're like, if I stop, he might cry. You forfeit sleep. When you have four kids, you forfeit other things, like everything it seems. I forfeit eating what I want in the cupboard because somehow they all eat it before, before me. I think that when we say yes to God, we've got to understand we're also saying no to a lot of other things. And I don't know that when we say, yes, God, send me. Yes, God, use me. Yes, God, transform me. We don't understand that we're forfeiting sometimes our comfort. We're forfeiting our preferences. We're forfeiting the way I would do it. Because come on, we all have a, the way I would do it. Has anyone ever tried to tell God what his job is? Or how to do it at least? Like you're like, God, um, it's really cool that you um, are like intervening in my life and I gave you the steering wheel, but like, uh, can we just speed up the whole marriage thing. Uh, also, I don't know if you've noticed God, but I'm extremely gifted and I'm not on a platform. So uh, don't mean to tell you how you do your job. I mean, you created this place pretty well, six days, impressive, but still. And I think we often approach God with send me because what we wanna get, but we don't understand that what you get means you gotta give. You gotta give some things up if you're gonna gain some things and pick some things up. It's just the reality of it. I wanna put this out there. Would you follow God if it wasn't to your dream destination? But it was your dream life. Because I know that if I said we're doing People Church Hawaii, everyone's about that. And to be honest, I'm about it first. <laughs> Send odds and I. But my heart is over this particular message and I really don't exactly know where this series is gonna take us because I believe God's in the driver's seat of this series. And all I know is that you and I better get our hearts ready for what He does when He shows up. And I think it's pretty fitting that this series seemed to drop at the same time that we seem to be in person again. And when we show up collectively, I believe God's gonna do something corporately. I believe it's gonna be good. So let's read this. Psalm 143, verse nine to 10. It says this, rescue me from my enemies, Lord, for I hide myself in you. Beautiful, beautiful thought. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. What a beautiful thought that, that David hides himself in God in seasons that are difficult. More than that, he's saying, rescue me from my enemies. Maybe you and I don't live in a day where there's like enemies chasing you down with swords. Someone laughed a little bit like, little do you know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, 
the message is hitting on all sorts of levels. But just because someone's not charging towards you doesn't mean you have enemies. In fact, if we take this scripture and contextualize it to the New Testament, maybe our enemies, they're not flesh and blood, but they're principalities and powers. Maybe they're leadings, promptings, temptations, ways of thinking. Maybe your enemy to your greatest day is the fact that you are too afraid to step into it. Maybe your leading is that you think too much. Maybe your enemy is that you don't think through it enough. Maybe your enemy is that you feel so much that you can't put logic to it. Whatever the enemy is, I wanna tell you that there is one and the greatest way to evade an enemy is not always to fight them, but be led away from them for, through what God wants to do with you. And I love this scripture. Let's go to um, 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 Proverbs for me. Let's read this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not be depend on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't depend on your own understanding. Obviously not woke Jesus because understanding is what I think, what I know. You're telling me to forfeit what I know? Wait, wait, God, wait, wait. You're telling me, think less, feel more? You're telling me what I know doesn't factor in as much as is what you know? Wait a second. This doesn't sound right, but it's in the Word. I find it interesting that the recipe for you and I's best day means that you and I don't have to always take our hands off the steering wheel, but we gotta take our thoughts off it. Man, I just convicted myself because Audrey drove on the way here. I'm the worst backseat driver in the world. I can't help it. Like, she took a lane where it was like nothing but potholes. I'm trying to drink my coffee, I'm poking my eyes. <laughs> if my eyes are open, they're caffeinated. <laughs> Lean not on your understanding. You and I, one of our enemies is what we understand. Yet God is there to bring us through something else. Lead us another way. I wanna speak to you from the subject. We're gonna talk through the lens of peace, but we're gonna speak from the subject title, Paid in Full. <laughs> lens of peace paid in full. Let's talk about the lens for a second. I was kind of thinking about peace and I always like to get every perspective that I can. I want to know what the Word says, obviously, and then I want to know what the world says. I want to know where we as humans naturally incline when it comes to a subject. And what's God say about it? Well, the truth is that when it comes to peace as a humanity, it's not really a construct that lives within our view outside of the lack of war, the lack of fights, the lack of confrontation. There is a little bit spoken about on uh, inner peace. And when I looked up how you get inner peace, it was everything from a little bit more yoga, which Paige Willis, I'm with it now. I'm with yoga. I need to learn how to stretch. I'm, I'm for it. I used to give her, you know, I used to, and then I had to kind of ask for forgiveness because I now need it. So, because something happens around 38 where your body just stops moving in the way that it used to. There was a lot of like, make sure that there's peace in your relationship. Eat well was one. Eat better and you'll have inner peace. And there was, um, what else was there? Uh, be where you are. My problem is this. As a construct, the only way the world knows how to get to it is circumstantially and conditionally. If the circumstances are right, you can gain peace for a minute. So you could have it from seven till 7.45 at your yoga class, and then you could get it if you chose the salad, not the Popeye sandwich. And then you could have it again if you came home and instead of zoning out, you engaged in a, like, and, and painted your nails with your daughter that is four, maybe. Because you could go to bed, maybe knowing that you did all the right things that day and the circumstances provided you a peace. But yet, when the Bible talks about it, it is not circumstantial. And it does not matter what you do, it just seems to be given to us through a God who transfers it both by who He is and our knowledge of it, and secondly, the fact that He gives it to us and it surpasses understanding, which let's just put this, have you ever been paranoid about something that you fully comprehend? Not really, not often, unless it's bad and you comprehend it. But like, 
you know, Tristan's here. Tristan, the captain pilot, I think. I don't know. Last time I called you the pilot, I got corrected. So Tristan, the captain pilot. Um, I'm so bad. We've only been back like 40, 20 minutes and I'm already. But have you ever kind of freaked out on an airplane because you just don't know the way it works? Like if you ever stop, not me. I'm not a paranoid flyer or anything. But have you ever actually stopped to think this thing is huge and we're in the air and we're over the ocean? The amount of times I've planned what I would do. I've even asked myself, would Audrey wait for me? Audrey, I told her, wait for me. I will be like Tom Hanks on an island somewhere. I will get to you. Because I don't comprehend it, it freaks me out a little bit. I don't comprehend the safety measures on some of the rides in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in like, in, you know, what is it? like Six Flags or something. When you don't understand it, you often get a little bit freaked out about it. But when you understand it, you seem to have peace about it. But here's God with a contradiction saying, by the way, my peace is evident even when you can't comprehend what's happening. So what God is telling us is you don't need to know the way in order to feel safe. You don't need to know what's next in order to have peace. You don't need to know how He's gonna work it out for you to have faith. You don't need to have the knowledge and the answers in order to have peace. That is mind blowing. Because what it means is that God provides a peace that is not circumstantial. It is not according to what you know. It is absolutely dependent on two factors. One, that He knows and you know who He is. God, I don't, I don't know the way, but I know that you are good. God, I don't know the answer to society's problems right now. The last 18 months have been shocking and, and scary. And the reality is after we all put our fists up and we're like, it's got to change. And we all ask ourselves, how do we make a change? None of us know. So how do we move? How does this thing work? How do we still have a church after COVID? How does it all work? The truth is this, peace that surpasses understanding is when you actually stop living at the level of what you know and you start living in the freedom of who you know. We are not free because things are perfect and real peace is not the absence of an enemy. It is being in the midst of those things knowing that you've got a God that can handle it. Are you maybe held back because you have not focused on the one you know, but you are too caught up on what you don't know? I don't know what's next. If, if, if I make road A happen, there's so much uncertainty. God, I've always wanted to be used by you, but I don't comprehend how you'd use someone like me. God, I wanna love the church, but there's so much I don't understand about it. But we all expect the church to love us even though they, and how dare they ask to understand us in order to love us or anybody else for that matter, right? Because that's not the way it should move. I wanna encourage you. I wanna inspire, I wanna call you. I pray that this message does something in you. I pray that it wakes you up. I pray that it actually gets you the courage you need to move for the things that God's called you to. I pray that it brings you close again because over the last 18 months while we've been ruminating about every thought and everything and every other subject, all of a sudden our hearts gotten cluttered. And although we think that thinking is awesome and it is, but the reality is if your thinking has led you further from people, it's caused you to be less gracious. You're not as peaceful. You're not full of joy. You don't love people. In fact, you've canceled and removed people that God needs you to be close to. Why? Because who's the light? If we're the light, but the light only collects together, there's a lot of dark places that don't have Jesus. What would these next 18 months look like when God hits back at everything that has just happened over the last crazy time that we've been in? The world needs to be put together and it's not gonna be put together by a theology, uh, an, I, I guess a, uh, a theory or an idea, but by a God who genuinely loves people and by people who look like the God that loves people. Could you imagine what you and I would do if our peace was founded in a God that is just peace? And we know He's got it and we know He's sorted it out. I think you would run a little faster. I think you would take on a few more risks. I think you'd let go of a few more hurts. Listen, I don't know how we're gonna figure all this out, but I know this, man, God saved me, He loves me. I can give you the same kind of forgiveness. We might have to talk if we wanna be close again, but. I can at least let it go in my heart. I wanna put this out there that you and I might be able to run with peace 
because it's not about your circumstance. In simplicity, your, la- your anxiety is not about what is coming to you or what you don't understand. The truth is that our anxiety comes because we don't lean on a God that's got it for us. That's the beauty of it. If this last season has left you feeling helpless or tired, know that there's a God that's got you. And while you can't figure it out, he's so interested and invested in your best day that he's figuring it out in the background. You don't always see what he's doing. You don't always realize how he's there. In the midst of a storm, the disciples didn't realize he was walking just a little bit further away, but he's there. While the disciples couldn't understand why he had to go to a cross, it became evident a little later. While they didn't understand why they were waiting in the upper room, it became evident a little bit later. While Moses didn't understand why he was in a desert at a dead end, it became a little bit evident later. While Joseph didn't quite understand why he would have to go on a journey away from his family and be imprisoned, it became evident a little bit later. While David lived a life of feeling left out in the least of these, it didn't make sense, but it became evident a little bit later. While Samuel was looking at all the prototypicals, it didn't make sense why God was like holding off and saying, not this one, not this one, not this one, but it made sense a little bit later. Would you give God the benefit of a little bit later? God, it doesn't make sense to me right now, but I'm I'm so sure you'll meet me a little bit later. God, the storm looks like it could take me out, but I know that it's just a bit of time until you get there. Imagine the courage that you and I would walk with. Imagine the way that we would love. Imagine the way we would pursue. Imagine the way that we would do the things that God has called us to if we didn't have to figure it all out because we know He's holding it all together. It changes everything. It changes everything. You know, um, Fridays, I do my own like little uh, house stuff. Right, like if you own a house, there's always something to do. It's like, you don't so much own a home as much as you own a home, a job, a hobby, a DIY to-do list. Like it is just the, the way a home goes. It's just like, it's what it is. One of those things is I pay my bills. And paying my bills, can I just say, is one of the best feelings. Because there weren't, there was days where I didn't really have the ability to pay my bills. So I just didn't look at them. <laughs> Talking about peace. <laughs> Chris's financial planning. If you have bills you cannot pay, don't look. <laughs> if I was a doctor, if your arm hurts while doing this, stop doing it. <laughs> Come to me for therapy, feel better. <laughs> this is the extent of what I, it's becoming quite clear I had no other option but doing this. Can I just say, it's very trippy hearing you laugh, but not seeing your mouths move. (laughs) It feels so weird. I feel like I'm in some sort of a thriller movie because we're in an art gallery and everything's white and then everyone's like, and I can't see mouths, but I'm hearing stuff. I'm like, God, what? This is what the upper room felt like. I don't know where I was going with that, but it caught my attention. Um, so, um, yeah, anyway, I was just saying I was paying my bills, right? Paying my bills. Can you pay my bills? Um, <laughs> calm down, Beyonce. A bit forward of you. First date, writing a song about bills being paid. Um, obviously, the COVID left me with randomness that never existed before. And that's the people, church people. Okay, there you are. Um, so anyway, I paid my bills, right? And um, there is something really good about auto pay because when you're broke, you don't use auto pay because you don't want anyone taking your money because you wanna eat, you wanna eat with that money. <laughs> so you just don't do auto pay. But when you finally get to a place where you can meet the bills, you put auto pay and there is something so nice. My Friday, there's like two bills that I don't do on auto pay, the rest of it all on auto pay. And it's just so good because there's peace that comes with knowing that everything that I've got has been paid for. It's just so nice. Hence our title today, 
The price of admission for your best day and your calling has been paid in full. So if it is paid in full and now I enjoy coming into my house, there was a time where I would see any kind of tow truck come past our house in the early days of planning the church and I'd be looking and I'd be so nervous, my heart would be beating. I'm like, they're gonna, they're gonna impound the car. They're gonna impound the car because we're like five days late and I'm pretty nervous. And I'm pretty nervous about everything. The lights could go off at any moment. In fact, the hot water went off in the winter. And I was too proud to tell anyone. Audrey wasn't. She was like, I'm showering at Leslie's. I was like, because Chicago cold water is not like any other cold water on the earth. Chicago cold water comes straight from an, like, iceberg. My head was shrinking. That's what it felt like. There was so much angst in me not knowing if every single thing that needed to be met in my life was met. But I've got to tell you that now I enjoy my home and it doesn't even become a worry in the forefront of my mind. Why? Because my bills are paid in full. I'm not wondering if there's going to be an eviction. I'm not wondering if I'm not going to have the means. The beauty of being paid in full. Some of you are like, I ain't never playing at church. Um, that's just our story. It doesn't have to be yours. You know, I'm just saying, just putting it out there. I don't want to paint a negative picture. But I will say this. Things that are worth a lot cost you a lot. And this church is worth a lot, but it costs us a lot to start it, and that's okay. So here's to you and I running. Here's to you and I getting back on track. Here's to you and I not being stifled into standstill because we don't know what God's gonna do about the problem in front of us. Here's to you and I being a church that can love. Here's you and I being a church that can stand on truth. Here's you and I actually going for our calling. Here's you and I saying yes to the next season of life, even though we don't know how it's gonna work out. Here's yes to saying I'm gonna be a college student because God called me to it. Here's yes to saying I'm gonna put my hand up for this team, even though I'm afraid of it. Here's yes to having children, even though you're afraid of what kind of parent you're gonna be. Because my point is this, if you and I are afraid, can we really follow whatever God leads? us to because I don't think that you and I haven't heard him that's a scary part come on even the apostle Paul he heard God before he met Jesus on that road that's why Jesus said to him it's hard for you to kick against the goads meaning you've heard my voice you've heard me asking you you've heard me knocking on your heart you've heard me calling you You've heard me telling you, there's not many people that don't know what God is asking them to do. So many would say, I'm called to preach. I'm called to lead. I'm called to step up. I'm called to be a mother in the house. I'm called to be a business owner, whatever it is. We know, but it's the difference between the courage that you have to walk out what God has told you to do. That's why Joshua is told, hey, don't look to your, to your, to your left and don't look to your right, but meditate on my word and it will make your way successful. What is his word? Another way of putting it, it's him. And it's the way he thinks, it's the way he processes, it's the way he speaks, it's the way he approaches problems, it's the way he approaches the challenges of life. Let's get courageous, church. Like let's stop settling because we're too afraid. Let's stop settling because we haven't thought it out. Let's stop being held back because we don't understand how it's gonna go. Let's start being a church that is on call for a God that wants to use us. Us putting our hand up saying, God, send me. Because your best day, your calling is paid in full. How do we get to a place if... If this last season has left you a little bit more critical, a little bit more cynical, a little bit more angry, a little bit numb, a little bit overwhelmed, we've heard the word fatigue for everything because there's a lot going on and it's a real thing. There's a lot of this, a lot of that, it leaves you tired. I believe that through the Holy Spirit, and through our God, you and I can surpass the things that bring us down. I believe that you and I, irrespective of the challenges in front of us, could lead beyond them. I believe that you and I could definitely get to a place where we're soft and in love with Jesus. I think that you and I can definitely get in a place where we're bigger than our fears. I think you and I, 
can overcome what we don't understand and live at the level of faith. I really believe it. I believe that your best day from the back row to this wing over here, I believe that God is enough and He wasn't wrong when He called you and He wasn't ignorant of the facts that are in front of you. I believe that whatever has held you back through this series in the name of Jesus will break and through God having full access to your heart, I believe that you and I will be able to be the kind of church that people will look at and go, oh my God, I didn't think I really understood everything about God and I really don't kind of fully comprehend it, but there is something about you that is attractive and it's not the way you look. There's something about you that is so peace. It just brings me peace. It's calming. There's something about you that gives me hope. This is what you and I get to be. Like, can you believe what you and I are part of today? This thing called the church where every Sunday we get together and people get to hear a message of hope and love and standard. When you love people, you tell them that there's more. But before my kids ever heard probably any aspect of my discipline, they felt the warmth of my arms. Think about that. Why is it that kids, well actually, they really don't listen. Um, that's a whole journey. Um, I've got four of them and only one really listens really well. Actually two, Cruz and River. Um, the other two seem to just tag team. <laughs> and just, they're awesome. They are, I love them. They'll change the world. I pray I don't lose my hair before that happens, but they will change the world, they're awesome. But this is what I, th I thought. We often as Christians don't know how to walk the standard between God's love and a standard because we live in a world that doesn't have the hope for change. And if there is no hope for change, change is now interrupting with my identity. And the truth is, therefore, if you're calling me to change, you're telling me I'm not enough. But if God says you're enough, no matter what you do, whether you win, you lose, it doesn't matter, you're enough, then all of a sudden, what you trust in God is God's got your best day in mind. And when God says, hey, let me just ask you, why don't you just lead to this level of what I've got for you? Why don't you live to this level of what I've got for you? And it's not because he's trying to prove his, 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 his might. How many of us have thought when it comes to the areas of obedience in God, it's God just wanting to flex? All right, God, we get it. You've got the ability to give me a flat tire on the way to work because I didn't listen. All right, God, I get it. You've put everyone in my way on the way to work. Now I'm late. You're tough, you're powerful. We understand. But have you ever thought that God's obedience is also bumper rails that lead you to your best day? Have you ever wondered why the first time we come to church we get this encounter that just hits us? That's because I feel like it goes like the whole journey of having children. Cruz was born, he felt our warmth, he felt our care. We fed him, we, we, we just loved on him. As he got older, he tested some boundaries, but he never questioned whether mom and dad were still loving him. He definitely questioned our decisions. For him, touching the hot plate was the best thing that could have ever happened. Geez, dad, you're so lame. Let me put my hand on the fryer. Well, son, no. Um, you need that hand and you'll be thankful one day when you've, you know, like, how often have we maybe, 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 that's a new word, you look it up. <laughs> Vocab's one of my gifts. How many times have you maybe been angry at God for not letting you touch the fryer of life? and we've called him unfair. But the reality is he's absolutely fair and he loves you and he's got the best for you. And maybe through that simple prompting, you and I could lead to a better place. I wanna throw over um, Psalm yeah, 27. It says this, my heart has heard you. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Here's the number one key if you wanna break a hard heart. Here's the number one key if you wanna break fear over your life. Here's the number one key if you wanna break judgment in your life. If you wanna break that sense of cynical, if you wanna break that sense of mistrust, if you wanna break whatever your enemy is that chases you down, complacency, whatever it is, this is the number one thing, okay? Get back to talking to God. Write it down for me. It's the only point of today. Get back to talking with God. 
There's so many beautiful moments where Moses talks with God as a friend talks to a friend. And the beautiful thing is he had, a, had like a, a, I guess you could call it an intern, an understudy, if you're in that theatrical world. I don't know what you wanna call it. Um, I just wanna say that he had someone that was learning from him. And this is what Joshua would often do. Moses had to go back to work. And the Bible tells us that Joshua would stay back in the tent of meeting and just sit there before God. I think sometimes we're too quick to get to the day without spending time with the one that can prep us for it. This week I got challenged because I had this thing that I didn't know how to figure out. I didn't know how to sort it out. I was like, I'm gonna call one of our overseers. He's very knowledgeable. He's been in the church world longer than me. I wanna ask him, I wanna ask him this question. Then I thought, I'll ask another friend that's in another city. I think he's very wise. And I felt like the Holy Spirit challenged me. He said, why would you talk to them without talking to me first? How many times has our current state been the collection of other people's opinions and not God's leading? How many times have you and I maybe said yes to something or no to something or gathered or got offended about something according to other knowledge, but not actually a face-to-face -face with God? If you are trying to carry the burdens of this world without the God that can heal them, I promise you these burdens will bring you down. I don't sit there. Sometimes people go, how could you be a pastor with everything that's happening in a church? Can I tell you, I don't lead by myself. I know that Chris Carmona is not the answer. I know I'm not the answer to Audrey. I know I'm not the answer for Cruz. I know I don't carry what I'm not made to. What I do is I partner with the God that can. And when you and I get face to face with God again, it's funny how He starts to put things in perspective. Maybe you feel like angry. Maybe you're so burnt out. Maybe this last season has just depleted you. What I think we all would benefit from is getting before God again and saying, God, it's, your, your word is clear. You wanna meet with us. It tells us pray without ceasing. It talks about being in your presence. We see modeling and types in the Bible of men and women who were chasing you. We see moments where people, where they got far from you and we see moments where they came close to you again. In Malachi, we see where your people left and we see where your people came back. And God, every single time that we get before your presence, you are merciful to, re to, to allow us to return. God, you are so gracious to see beyond our mistakes. And God, you soften us and you set us on the right path again. Let's get back to talking to God before we talk to our friends. Let's talk to God before we talk at people through social media. How many of us wouldn't have to delete a post if we actually went to God before we went to people? Let's read the Bible before we read any other book. I just think we're the church. And if you're like me, this isn't just because you've weighed up the options of religions in the world, you've done your studies and you thought this one makes, look, out of all the ones I'm gonna bet on, this one seems to make the most sense because archeologically it's never been disproven. Do you know that? That not one thing that has been written in the Bible has ever been disproven through archeology. span In fact, it has always been proven. Even the pool of Bethesda was found 40 feet below ground completely as described in the Bible. Not everything that has been spoken in the Bible has been found, but nothing that has been found dis disputes it. This is amazing. So when you and I are feeling the pinch of life, could you imagine if we actually just took up our mantle as Christians and said, before I meet my enemy on the battlefield, I'll meet with my Savior in private. Yeah. Do you notice that when David fought Goliath, he went back to God first? He was like, how could this be God? How could this man stand against your people, God? He went to God first, like, God, wait, what's happening here? This doesn't make sense, God. How could anyone stand against you? This makes no sense, God. What is it that is going on here? And then he goes out and he faces his giant with the courage that came from his Savior in private. You wanna get courageous, get before God. You wanna get compassionate, get before God. You wanna be fired up again, get before God. What would the church look like if you and I, before we asked for permission from circumstance, we got it from Creator? 
Uh, my circumstance doesn't really shape up to being someone that's going to live my calling just yet. I'm going to wait till I've got X, Y, Z in order. Do you know what? If it was in order, you don't need faith. Let's embrace a world of disorder because we have a God of order. Which means if God can actually get me through every season that seems crazy, that seems wild, I'm gonna go because my peace is not circumstantial. I don't show up to my peace at 7.45 in stretchy pants. I don't show up to my peace in form of a salad. And my peace isn't dependent on my actions. Because if it was, there's, no, there's a rare collection of days that I would ever be able to say I got it right. And more than that, when you are your source of righteousness and peace through the efforts that you make and the circumstances you create, the angst is that you can't keep it up. <laughs> so anxious keeping up what you can't instead of embracing what has been paid. I wanna to speak to every single person overburdened by your family, overburdened by what you haven't transformed in yet, you haven't changed it, you don't understand in the word yet. I wanna to speak to every single person that maybe is so riddled that you haven't left your house in so long. I wanna to speak to every single person that can't block out the voices of the past. You're still mad at someone from grade three. The title and the moment of embarrassment that happened in those early years, you're still living from it. I wanna to speak to every single person that doesn't even want to embrace the idea of calling because it actually means you've gotta confront some things that you're not ready for. I wanna to speak to every single person living in this city, in this church, in, in this day and age, in this time, embracing a calling that you don't feel prepped for, a city you maybe don't know what you, because the majority of our church isn't from here. No one's from Chicago, everyone's from Wisconsin. Naples. I honestly believe you and I have been looking for peace in all the wrong places. And the devil's having a field day because he knows how to keep you where you are. Balled up in angst because we don't understand that our peace comes from a God that is above us. It surpasses what you can't comprehend. Let's read one last closing verse that is challenging, encouraging, and freeing, I think. Strong? Couldn't be the first service without it. Luke 6, 45. You know it well, you know. A good person produces good things from the treasury of good, uh, from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Let's just stop for a second and ask ourselves why it uses the word treasury. I mean, I get it when it's speaking of good because treasure is good. But why does it say that someone that has, that a person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart? You know that a treasury is quite simply a place that holds what is valuable. It's not the treasure, it's a treasury. It's where we store things. It's funny what it's challenging here because it's challenging the fact that you and I maybe hold on and value things that we shouldn't. And that sometimes what you and I hold and value is in direct contrast to what God calls good. I mean, this is talking top to tail from the grudge that you're storing, your cynical approach to the next relationship is because in your treasury, you value holding a grudge. I'm not letting that person leave without them bending over backwards to show me that they've changed. They don't deserve my forgiveness. I'll never forget the time that people took advantage. I'll never forget we're storing things that might be corrupting us. Wow. 
I wonder if this verse kind of brings light to the moment where God says, or Paul says, whatever is good, focus on that. Whatever is good, focus on that. I wanna encourage you as you go into this week, let's destroy the treasury and rebuild it right. I don't know if I have a treasury. Oh yeah, you got a standard for how you'll meet the new person if they fit the criteria of the old person? I don't trust X because when I was, an X came to me and did. I don't trust people that do or look or dress or say or in positions of because when I was, they did. So all of a sudden, what you and I have hidden in a treasury, a standard that we will approach to every single person. God's mercies are new to everybody, but ours are not. And out of the good that is in us, we bring good. And out of the evil that we've stored up, we bring evil. Let's go against the treasury this week and let's make sure that we don't have to hold it. And I've got to say this before we close. Do you know the only reason we hold it is because when we can't comprehend what happened to us, we create ways to defend it from ever happening again. I'm not free to let it go because I'm the only one that's got me. But if God's got you, you can let it go and know that God will return to you better than what you have ever let go of. He will return to you peace. He will return to you safety. Let's be a people as we approach this heart series. Let's go back to God. Let's get face to face with Him again. Let's raid the treasury and let's get rid of the evil that we stored up in there and let's get the good back in there. Let's stop about holding accounts of every moment that we don't feel God actually met us at our, at our junction, at our big moment. Let's get back to the fact that He says He will in just the right time. The Bible says, he is not late as some class lateness, but He is patient. I wanna encourage you, if you're in a big season, there is a God who isn't distant. He's not hard to know and He's not away from you. If you're in this room, I wanna let you know if this is your first time at People Church, Maybe it's your first time back in the community for so long and this was a milestone for you. You were afraid, you were nervous. I wanna encourage you, I'm so thankful you came. I'm so thankful you pushed through. But I believe this, that in this series, you and I, we're gonna push through together through some bigger things. I believe you and I, we're gonna push through some stereotypes. I believe you and I, we're gonna push through some limits. I believe you and I, we're gonna push through some hurts. We're gonna push through some wounds, some traumas. We're gonna push through some ideologies. We're gonna push through some lies. We're gonna push through some fears. We're gonna push through some ceilings. We're gonna push through a whole bunch of stuff. We're gonna get face to face with God again. And we're just gonna ask Him to speak to the very thing that we can't see anymore because His understanding is greater. I don't know how it's gonna work out, God, but I know You do. And I'm not going to worry about the bills that I can't pay anyway. Because I know you've paid them in full. I feel like my account when it comes to peace and loving people and the way I've parented and the way I ate today, God, and how I'm going to navigate this next season of calling and college and, and speaking to people like you've called me to. God, I don't understand it, but I know you paid it in full. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show up knowing that nothing and no one can evict me from your love, nothing and no one can evict me from my calling, nothing and no one can evict me from my purpose, and nothing and no one can evict me from my purpose, from my peace. You know what I love? One of my favourite verses that came up was Romans 10 and it said this, that righteousness comes from believing in our heart that Jesus is who He says He is. And salvation comes from declaration that He has saved us. The devil's tried to paint a picture. If you're a first timer, if you're a first timer, the devil's tried to paint a picture that salvation is difficult. How many people don't come to church? Because salvation is difficult. Don't you have to change first? Don't you have to get better first? Don't you have to be a saint first? Don't you have to know the Bible first? Don't you have to know everything first? Don't you have to go back and say sorry to everybody first? No, 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 no. The devil's complicated what he knows is dangerous. Anyone that is into keeping someone captive doesn't want to let them know where the keys to freedom are. You don't have to be anxious. You don't have to be alone. You don't have to be stuck. You don't have to be fearful. Salvation's not hard. 
it's a simple, well, what kind of a God makes it that easy? He's got to be good. How can God make it that simple? He's just saying this, hey, uh, my criteria is really kind of, um, really, it's kind of like an anybody club. It's kind of like an everybody club. Um, you just got to believe that I am who I am. And then if you just say it, first rule about Fight Club, don't tell anyone about Fight Club. First rule being a Christian, confess it. You believe it, you say it, you're saved. How brilliant is that? Not what the devil told us it was, not what fear tells us it was, not what our past experiences tells us it was. If you're on the other side of this camera or in this room and you do not know Jesus as your Saviour, I wanna tell you right now, it's not as hard as you think. You've already believed in your heart. At one point in the message, you were like, wow, this is speaking to me. This God seems to be real. He's knocking on my heart. Why do I feel emotional? Wow, God, you've been in front of me for so long. Why have I not been listening? That's already done. That part happened whether I asked you about it or not. This next part, is where salvation happens. Salvation is the difference between you knowing that there's a life raft and you entering the life raft. What happened in your heart is acknowledgement that God is who He says He is. This next part is you actually choosing to take advantage of who He says He is. So if that's you on the other side of this camera or in this room, you believed in your heart, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna pray a prayer. Now at People Church, we leave no man or woman standing alone. So at People Church, every single person in this room is gonna pray it. We don't want you to stand out. We don't need you to stand out. This is a moment collectively between you, me and God, us and God. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pray a prayer and it's inviting Jesus into our heart as our Lord and Saviour. So what I wanna do is this. If that's you and you've believed in your heart and you're in this room, you're saying, man, I'm, I'm saying yes to Jesus for the first time or maybe you're coming back after a long time. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pray this prayer together. You're gonna to pray it and God's gonna know you mean it from your heart. Are you ready? Come on now, people, church, are you ready? All right, let's pray. Are you ready? Come on, repeat after me. Let's close our eyes, bow our heads. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask You into my heart as my Lord and Saviour. I thank You. You forgive me of all my sin. I pray that I would live a life of peace and purpose through a relationship with You. In Jesus' Name we pray. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Hey, here's something I wanna do. If you're in one of our physical locations, we're not gonna embarrass you in this moment. This is just a moment for me and you. If you're online, just stay on. We're gonna talk about something in a second, but I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads for one last second. If you made that decision, I'm not gonna call you out the front, but I do like to personally acknowledge and pray for you just a corporate prayer from here for 30 seconds. If you made that decision today, you came home to Jesus or you said yes for the very first time, I want you to just raise your hand in this room. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna acknowledge it for a second. I'm gonna pray for him. Come on. Father God, I thank you for everyone in this room and I thank you for those on the camera, Lord God, that have experienced you today for the very first time. I pray that God, what you have given us would not be something we lose. I pray, Father God, that You would guard it, that You would speak to us, place good people around us, Father God. Help us protect this great gift of peace that You have given us, that You sent Your Son to die on a cross for, Father God. I thank You that You do that. And I pray that today would mark the beginning of the rest of our life. In Jesus' Name, everybody shout it. Amen. Amen. Come on. So good to be back. Hey, if you're online and you made that decision, um, we wanna give you a Bible. And it is a simple gift, but I believe it is powerful by what it marks. It marks today, the day where you found God or came back to Him and the rest of your day starts, the rest of your life starts. And so I wanna encourage you. Uh, I often say you often, you don't maybe think you needed, you maybe didn't think you needed this service, but uh, a few moments in it made it quite clear that God's got you and that He's real and that He wants to actually interact with you and set you up for a life that you were made for. And so this, is one of the greatest tools that you could have on that journey. You're not always gonna have someone that can speak life into you, but this book can. When you read it, you meet face to face with the God who loves you. It is a letter written to you, even though it was written long ago. It's got truth for you, truth for your future. So we wanna give it to you, okay? It's free, it's simple, it's easy. Here's the thing, if you are in Chicago, what we need you to do is you are going to text DECIDED to 312-586-8376. Okay, that number is also on your screen. And if you are from anywhere else in the world, 
all you've got to do is scan the QR code right there on the screen. Do it now. Come on, you could, I could wait, wait a second. Scan it. And what's going to happen is you just respond to the prompts. And if you text that number, what's going to happen is we're going to send you an invitation. You can accept that invitation. One of our team members will reach out. They'll get some details from you and they will send you this book. We don't know whether we will see you again or when we will see you, but we know that this book will go with you. So we want to give you that free gift. Church, is it good to be back in person? Come on, so good. Well, all of us here and all of you there, I wanna encourage you, let's keep praying for these limits to keep increasing. I believe that God's gonna do something in this, in, in this new season. As people come home to the house of God, I think we're gonna be filled, we're gonna be fueled, and we're gonna fill, and we're gonna fuel. And God's gonna do great things. Thank you for joining us here again. We have Hearts series continuing over the next few weeks. I believe it's gonna be powerful. It's gonna change lives. So we will see you back here next week. Or you can also register, in fact, for an in-person service through Renee. If we don't see you in person, we will see you online. Can't wait to be with you again. Amen. <laughs>